Hey there, YouTube second gen Dodge Ram fans, Ram fans in general. Hey, welcome to our video covering some death wobble fixes. Uh, this will apply specifically to second gen Ram 94 to 02. Um, and the death wobble is more pronounced on the four wheel drive trucks due to the heavy front axle. Um, but some of what I'm saying here will apply to third gen trucks as well. And just uh, take from it what you will. But there's several causes and suspects on death wobble situations, unstable steering, loose steering. Um, but let's get into it, okay? First of all, you should just do a general comprehensive check of every aspect of what's loose or could be loose on the uh, on the front axle. The uh, second gen trucks typically have a Dana 60 like this 97 Ram does, is my truck. And um, that's a very heavy axle, it weighs around 500 pounds. Uh, 450, I think, is the shipping weight. Um, very heavy, and if it gets out of control, if it starts oscillating, because that's what death wobble is, is unintended sudden front axle oscillation. I know it's a mouthful, <clears throat> but several things can feed into it. And you definitely generally want to check your control arm bushing integrity. That would be the dual control arms here. Check the bushings. You've got eight uh, bushings, you've got f uh, two arms on each side, so four arms and a, a, a bushing joint on either end. You can see one right there. So you want to check their integrity. That'll require a flashlight and getting down there and dirty on the ground and <laughs> checking it out, making sure there's no cracks in the rubber, etc. And we'll cover more on that later. Each of these areas could be expanded. <clears throat> Let me know in the comments what you want to see. But you also want to check your, uh, your sway bar mounting, okay, for a fact. Make sure it's mounted solidly. Links are in good condition. Um, you're going to want to make sure your ball joints are solid. Okay, this has had original ball joints, 218,000 miles. They're still as solid as a rock, upper and lower, both sides. And um, then there's, t those are typically not the things, though, that make death wobble bad. There's two aspects to bad death wobble that we've uncovered after 15 years of providing our, our ram steering fix for the column. And I'll get more into that, but the first, uh, literally the most hidden cause that people don't realize is there is bad shock absorbers and they go bad on the inside the valving gets weak <clears throat> and then at just the wrong moment uh, it can't hold the load uh, the road speed and your tire uh, loading and so forth so what I've got here I do have some Excel G KYB shocks here those are uh, my favorite brands of shocks are KYB and Rancho Rancho for adjustability, the KYB, a uh, great choice for quality. They don't have adjustable shocks like Rancho does, but they are excellent in terms of quality level, uh, value, and, and durability. But there's going to be a video, a link in the description below this, called How Shocks Wear Out, uh, made by KYB. I don't have any official affiliation with them. I just like their products, and um, their video is highly instructive. It's worth your eight minutes of time to watch it because it explains how the valving wears out, and it can wear out at different levels. Um, See. So you can have a shock that appears good at city speeds and lightly loaded, but then it goes bad and allows the big axle movements over larger bumps with bigger loads uh, at just the wrong moment. So that's why I'm pointing out that weak shocks or shocks of unknown age that are um, not able to hold highway high speed loads, those are the primary cause of death wobble. And it wouldn't matter whether it's a first gen, second gen, third gen, fourth gen Ram. That would be generally true of all of them. Now, the second gen Rams here, and also the first gens as well, have a weak spot in the column. And um, I'll cover that in a sec, but in the meantime, let me show you a different kind of shock than the KYB. Okay, KYB, great product. Love it. Also love the Rancho adjustable shocks if you tow a lot. Uh, the adjustability feature here with a little knob to dial in your dampening, absolutely great. You'll love it because you can turn it low for unladen and turn it, crank it up for towing and heavy. This shock was on the front of my truck until last year, and it had uh, about 200,000 miles on it. I believe still almost 100% functional. I had my doubts, so I pulled it off and replaced it. I thought I would test the, uh, the OE uh, KYB Excel G. <clears throat> And, uh, but I just got to give credit where credit's due. These Rancho adjustable um, RS9000s, fabulous product, love it. Um, the adjustability feature comes at a cost. These are about a $90 shock each. Um, you can get the Excel Gs like are on here right now. I believe KYB discontinued that, but they've got those for around $35 each. And amazing quality, uh, just amazing how they can give you a shock. It's been super durable, even though I, I do tow occasionally heavy. Not as heavy as I once did with the Ranchos here. 
but the lighter use I give the truck now is why I went with an OE style shock. And KYB would also have the gas adjust above this and the Monomax. If you tow every day or drive your truck heavy every day like a contractor would, I don't do that with my Ram. If you do, consider the KYB Monomax. You'll be very happy. It's a monotube shock and it would stand up to daily heavy use even better than this twin tube OE style. All right, well, let's look at the column weakness because the truth is all this general suspension things I've covered, if those are all tight, uh, renewed, check your steering box as well, of course, um, and the shocks are good, then you're probably not going to have death wobble in terms of a, uh, an effect of the road, how it pushes the truck around and how it negatively affects the axle stability. But let's talk about the control the driver has or, or doesn't have due to the column weakness. Okay, here's under hood on my 97 manual tranny ram. This is going to look a little different than an automatic, but I do have an automatic column to show you, so stay tuned if you're an auto. Um, what we see here is there's no spring left anymore because I've got the upgrade bushing in. Matter of fact, that upgrade bushing that's in the end of my column there is dates from 2006. It is my prototype one that I made back then. Um, it's never needed to be replaced all these years later, probably 160,000 miles of driving and uh, 14 years in there. Um, you can see the clamp, the retainer clamp that holds it. The way you would test to see if your column is loose is come down here and grab right about where that um, upper U-joint is that my finger's on. And you want to just give it a shake. You want to see how much, if any, the shaft moves. I have no movement there, not even a fraction of a millimeter. But if your column is causing you looseness in your steering that you may not be aware it's doing, you'll see the shaft move back and forth, uh, you know, two to four millimeters each direction that'd be like you know a quarter to uh, eight to a quarter inch of play or more um some guys call me up and say wow i can move it um <laughs> literally back and forth uh you know an inch a half inch each direction which is crazy that means they're steering from about three o'clock to nine o'clock um like they do in the old movies so you want to be careful um what happens is the bearing that is in a cup inset into the bottom of the column goes bad. And let me show you that on the other end with the, uh, the column we have. It's out of the truck, easier to see. Okay, here's the bearing cup that's in the bottom end of your column. This is from the manual uh, column in my truck here. But uh, the principle is the same. The automatic one would be the same ID and just smaller on the OD. Uh, frequently, the automatic is a metal cup. This is a metal bearing, of course, in a plastic cup. But the principle is the same. So you see the balls in there. Those are uh, very lightly greased, and they will not last forever. They do wear out, and then you have race upon race, and all of a sudden the shaft starts to skew sideways. And you see our precision upgrade here is the same size. Let me put them end to end. And it replaces the wear-prone bearing with a, a can't-wear-out Delrin. This is super abrasion-resistant Delrin, precision machined. Your column shaft will never go loose again <laughs> like it can right now or, or is right now and just to give you an idea here um the now this is the wrong size i've got an auto column here to show you and all the parts are out of it and i, I couldn't locate the uh, the automatic cup but this gives you the idea same principle the bearing cup is goes into the end of the column and then the spring is applying tension and the only reason you need that spring is because the old method used the forcing cone that I don't have handy here, but it pushes on there to help try and center things. And you really don't need any of that. With the new layout, the spring is superfluous, so we don't use it anymore. And um, you have detailed instructions, too. Our guide covers uh, every aspect of doing this. And to do it right, you really want to study it. So that's why the guide is printed. Um, you're not going to be wanting to have a laptop or a, some sort of smartphone out there and get it all greasy and nasty when you're working on the truck. So a good sign of a correctly rebuilt RAM steering fix column is you get instructions, uh, get grease on the instructions, and then you'll know your job is about done. But I'll go ahead and put this on a still static shot, and I'll show you how to insert the, uh, the bushing and how to get the clamp on there. So stay tuned. Okay. Put your automatic bushing. Make sure the shaft is smooth. Our steel wool take off all the uh, any rust that might be on the shaft or the entry lane. Get it started in there. You've already removed the stock parts, of course. It's just a quick overview. Take the tamper tool, the installation tool, put it against the face of the bushing. We're going to tap, tap, tap. In most cases, it'll go right into the stop lip. Every once in a while, you have a truck where it won't quite go all the way, but as long as it's tight and snug, and you do want to check your uh, in the truck for uh, resistance. 
And then your retainer clamp here just goes on like this. tricky to get them lined up there. If you have a set of O-ring pliers, clamp, snap ring pliers, it might, external jaws might work better. But there you go. That wasn't too hard. A little standard push there. Alrighty. Just that simple. Now your column is fully rebuilt and you've got uh, no chance you'll ever go loose again because you don't have any way for the, uh, there's no, nothing in there to wear out at all. And the, the one in my truck is Listed 160,000 miles of driving, 15 years. Our instructions come with the kit. It has everything you need to know how to do it correctly. And the, the product is lifetime warranty. If it would ever wear out, we've only had it happen to three or four of them over the years out of thousands and thousands sold. But we just replace it gladly, send you a new one, no charge at all. And um, <clears throat> our service includes consulting about ram steering issues too. So you don't just get the kit in the bushing for your $70. What you get is a lifetime relationship where we'll make sure that you have what it needs, you need to make sure your ram steers well. And we've been doing this for a long time. And even anything we don't directly sell, we're aware of what's out there to make your ram truck steer properly. So happy to share with you the collective wisdom we've got from consulting with thousands of ram owners over the last 15 years on get, making them steer correctly and safely. Alrighty. So thank you very much. Um, we don't have any affiliate links right now, but I will endeavor to put some links for some key products um, in the video description box below that little arrow. And please smash the like button. That helps the algorithm. It'll tell other people that the video is worth watching and was helpful to you. And I'll have a description down there of that, where to find that KYB video on the how shocks were out. That's really key. I would like everyone to be safe as they drive their Ram um, truck around. And the four-wheel drive ones especially are subject to very bad death wobble in certain conditions. And um, never really fully addressed by Dodge, but it's because it's a complex problem. And many people uh, didn't quite guess correctly as to what it was, but we've uncovered it is the bad shock valving. And the shocks can appear fine, but upon loading loaded highway conditions, they fail. So you want to make sure you've got a properly... Uh, size capacity shock and in good condition for your application now that's what the axle and the chassis are doing what we have here the advantage of the column fixing the column as well is this is your control side so the axle is responding to what's going on on the road kind of a feedback loop um, and this is your transmit so the driver can control what's going on with the axle and when this goes loose just imagine if you had bad shocks so they're going to let the axle float and flop around when you hit a big bump uh, and you're heavily loaded you start to lose control that way and then your if your column is loose you will not be able to control it that way either so the advantage of, of both approaches and that's why i highlight the worn shocks uh, that are not up to the snuff of your loading and your road demands along with the lack of column precision Alrighty, so thank you very much. Um, you can visit us anytime online at rocksolidramtrucksteering.com. Once again, rocksolidramtrucksteering.com. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thanks for watching, and God bless you.